Hey guitar fam and friends, we're going to take a look at the Darius Rucker version of the song Wagon Wheel in this easy guitar lesson today. And uh, before we get into it, if you need any help with the fundamentals of guitar, you know, making clean chords, changing between chords, strumming, go to guitarfam.com and go through the Guitar Foundations course. It's free when you sign up for your complimentary account there on the site. Uh, anyway, let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to be capo 2. I'm going to use as if I were in the key of G. Okay, but really we're in the key of A major. Uh, and you don't have to play this with a capo on. It, since you, uh, you're you doing this, if you want to play it as if it's in the key of A major with A shapes, you can play A's, E's, F sharp minors, bar chord, and D. The reason I'm doing it with capo two is because that's the way it's done in the song and it avoids any bar chords for you. So it's easier to just jump into the song and start playing. So uh, the chords you need to know for this, the shapes you need to know are G. You could do a four finger or a three finger version of it, doesn't matter which one. A D. An E minor. And you can do just a normal E minor or the four finger. It's up to you. And then a C. Doesn't matter which one, you can do the four finger version of that or just a regular C too. If you're playing this in A, you don't want to use a capo, the chords you need are A major, E major, the F sharp minor, and a D. So the progression you need to learn for this entire song is just eight measures long. And it's really nice because it just repeats that chord progression over and over and over again. So all you really have to do is stay aware of, um, you know, your intensity or your dynamics to match if it's on a verse or a chorus or the bridge or whatever to play through the entire song. And um, the progression is just one measure of G, one, two, three, four, one measure of D, one, two, three, four, one measure of E minor, one, two, three, four, one measure of C, one, two, three, four. And that's the first phrase I'll work on getting that down first. Uh, second phrase is just G for one measure, one, two, three, four. One measure of D, one, two, three, four. And we skip the E minor this time and just do two measures of C, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's the first step that I would take is to just memorize this chord progression and make sure you can switch between all those chords smoothly, playing just whole notes. And you're always aware of where you are in the progression because it is pretty repetitive and you want to get it down to where you don't really have to think about it that much. That way you can concentrate kind of more on the dynamics of the song, the strumming pattern you're going to be using. Now, the most challenging part of this song for a lot of uh, of you out there who are, gonna, are beginners or you're working your way towards that intermediate uh, level of playing is just the swing feel that you have to be able to use to play the song properly. Now, uh, and a good way to work on that is to just start with a straight eighth note strumming pattern. So just one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, okay? But instead of being straight, like I just played one and two, three, four, one and two and three and four and, you need to learn to swing your eighth notes. And that just, when you do that, the number is sounds longer, or the first, first note sounds longer. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then the second note, the and sounds a little bit shorter. And you end up with this feel kind of like a flat tire kind of chugging down the road. That's the best way to think about it. I have um, a new course coming out. It's called The Strumming Doctor that's going to address a lot of these different types of feels and things like that. So if you need help with your strumming, uh, it's not out yet, but it should be out a few weeks after this video comes up. But that's the first step. Just work on getting your swung strumming instead of just being one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and you want one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Okay, and probably the best way that I know uh, to develop this, I could go into a lengthy definition of you know how a swing beat works, but it's kind of out of the scope of this lesson. But uh, the app tempo has this setting on it to where you can do swung eighth notes. And all it looks like, it looks like a triplet, an eighth note triplet with the middle triplet missing. And that's exactly what you want. By the way, this is at 150 beats per minute. So if that's swung eighth notes or eight swung feel, here's regular. They're very evenly spaced. And that's not what you want. This is what you want. Okay. So for all the strumming patterns we're going to be going over, that's the bass, it's just this. 
that's the basis for all these strumming patterns we're gonna look at. And I'm usually accenting the two and four, so one, two, three. So the first strumming pattern you can use will get you through the entire song, and it's the easiest one to jump into. It's just one, two, and that's the entire strumming pattern. And you just play it twice for each measure. So one, two, and three, four, and. Okay? So just down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay? So if you apply that to the progression we have, just I'm swinging those eighth notes instead of playing straight like this. That's a big difference between that and this. But that will get you through the entire song. So just play that strumming pattern down, down, up, down, down, up, that twice. It's only a two beat pattern, so you play it twice for each chord, so. Okay, so that's level one for strumming pattern one. Level two, for strumming pattern that you can do. And you can just use that first one for the entire thing if you just wanna jump in and play with it. But level two just uses bass notes mostly, like the bottom, the lower strings on beats one and three, and the higher strings on beats two and four. So one, two, and three, four. That's one measure, so next you move to the next chord. It's a D, so leave the low E and A strings out. Just the bottom couple notes. Three, four, and then go to an E minor. One, two, three, four, and, and then a C. One, two, three, three, four, and you leave that low E string out when you're playing uh, your C chord. And this is this isn't too precise. I'm hitting the, like the bottom two or three notes. You know the lowest two or three notes for each chord, and then the top uh, you know three or four strings for the high notes on two and four. So. It's uh, probably easiest to do this with just one chord if you're not used to it first because it's kind of a lot to think about. You have your swing fill, you have the strumming pattern down, down, up, down, down, up, and then you have your accents on two and four, and then now you have your kick, snare, kick, snare, kind of drum high. And I'm keeping my hand going. Da, 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 da. Regardless of if... Um, my hand, uh, the pick is actually digging into the strings. So that upstroke on the end of one, still going up, even though I'm not digging into it. So it's good to get that down on its own and then plug it in with a progression. And that will get you through almost the entire song. It will get you through the entire song if that's what you want to use. But I'm going to show you a second strumming pattern that I use uh, that's kind of a little bit closer to what's on the recording. And this isn't harder, it's just a little more specific. It's just down, down, up, down. So you have a quarter note down, then a dotted quarter note, then up, down. But my hand never stops moving, it's constantly doing da 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 And if you hear, like if you listen to the original recording, you'll recognize this is really close to what they're playing in there. So if you play that strumming pattern once for each chord, that'll fill up each measure, you can just play through the progression. So Okay. 
and you still have that swung uh, feel in this, so it's really important. You don't notice it as much on the two downs at the beginning, but on the up, down, up, which would be on and, four, and, you still have that swing feel, so it's really important to get that in there. So that swung, it'll be straight like this. And that's what you want to avoid. You want the swing feel. Okay, and a kind of level two for this drumming pattern would be just, just make sure you hit the lower strings on the one, on the first downstroke, and then the higher strings on the next downstroke, and then for the up, down, up, just hit all, hit all the higher strings. Basically, you want to make sure to get that nice bassy kind of uh, strum on the beat one of every measure. And that'll give you a good feel for this song overall, and then um, emphasize beats two and four if you can. That's a lot to think about, man. You got the swing fill, the accents, bass notes on one, high notes on all the other ones, and then switching between chords. And you can choose to use that starting pattern throughout this song if you want. And really, that's it. I have a couple of other variations. If you want to go watch the performance of the song just so you can kind of play through it, uh, you can go to the end of the video right now. Timestamps are below for you. Um, also, we have the tab available for you, the chord chart, which is just eight measures of the same progression over and over and over again. And a full jam track for you with the guitars taken out so you can play along to it. Now, I'm going to show you one more kind of intermediate strumming pattern with some single bass notes. but. Uh, I'll do that in a second. The only other thing that you need to be aware of is when you get to verse three of this song, things come way, way, way down. And we'll go through the order of the song in a minute. But for the verse three of the song, I just switched to whole notes. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just because everything drops out. And it does that for the entire verse. And after verse three, when you get to chorus three, um, it has a halftime feel to it. And if you don't know what that means, that's okay. Just know that you can play a simpler strumming pattern there and it will fit in great with what's going on musically. And all it is is one, two, three, four, and. And you have to have that, that swing feel on the four and. So one, two, three, four, and. And that's it. And you do that twice for chorus three, and uh, toward the end of chorus three, when you hit that C, you can ramp things back up because the song takes off again and goes to another chorus, which um, it goes back to the normal feel, full time feel of this song. Let's go through, um, actually, let's go through the order of the song, and then I'll go through uh, a really specific uh, strumming pattern that's more intermediate with some bass notes, some single bass notes and things like that for it. So for this song, you're gonna have an intro with a half of a progression with just the guitar and man a little bit of mandolin there at the tail end of it. So you only play G, D, E minor, C. And then the real intro starts off where you play the entire chord progression, the A bar chord progression one time. Then you go to verse one, uh, ver verse one that goes through the progression twice, chorus one that goes through the progression twice, a re-intro that goes through the progression only one time, verse two that goes through the progression twice, chorus two that goes through the progression twice, a bridge uh, with the fiddle and guitar solo where you go through the chord progression twice, and that's where verse three comes in. You have a really quiet down verse where I just use whole notes for all the strumming for the progression twice, and then uh, the next chorus is down as well as that halftime course where we have that little alternate strumming pattern. Then you have course four where you play through the progression twice. Then you have the outro where you play through just like the intro, but you play through the progression twice. And then you have a quiet uh, kind of extension of the outro where the drums stop and you just play, keep playing whatever uh, uh, strumming pattern you want there to fit that. So really, you don't have to think too much about the order of the song. All you have to do is use your ear to listen to the energy as it goes up and down and up and down and kind of match 
your intensity and your volume and your dynamics of your strumming to whatever's going on with the recording or the jam track. Don't forget to download that. Let's uh, go over that intermediate uh, strumming pattern that I wanted to show you. And it all it is, it's kind of the same. It's just down, down, up, down. Down, up with a quarter note, downstroke, and then eight notes with a down, up. So one, two. You're still maintaining that swing fill, but things get a little bit different with the bass notes here. So we're gonna do single bass notes on the low E string. Two, and, and for th th three, and you have the open A string, then you hammer on, and then four, and for the G, so. When you move to the D chord, you hit the open D string on one, and then two, and on the high string, so quarter note, two, eighth notes, and then on three, open A string, and on four, and high strings again, so. Okay, and when you go to the E minor, you hit the open low E string, then the higher strings for two and. For a three and, hit the open A string, and hammer on to the second fret of the A string, and then high strings for four and. So one, two, and three, and three. And you still have to maintain, when you're doing all this with these hammer-ons, still have to maintain that swing feel so it can be a little bit tricky and if you've never done this before just sit there and do the hammer on first and try to maintain the same volume between the pick note and the hammer on so it might be a good idea for you to just do this on one chord first because it can be difficult to have your accuracy to the point where you're not hitting wrong strings with those single bass notes, so that can be challenging. So G, D, E minor, and then for C, you play the A string on one, two, and on the high strings. Middle finger comes off, hit the open D string, hammer on for three, and, and then go four, and. So one, So take this just one chord at a time, and if you, your accuracy with your right hand isn't where it needs to be yet for your strumming, um, this is a really good opportunity to just sit there. Slow it way down, look back at your hand as you're doing this. Try to feel, you know, get some kind of tactile reference so you're, you can program in exactly where those strings are with your picking hand. And looking back, mix with that. It's a great way to really program that in. And all this kind of stuff is taught in the Strumming Doctor course when it comes out. So if you've been struggling with your strumming, be sure to keep checking back on the site or go there if this has been up for more than, I don't know, three or four weeks. And it'll be out. The first uh, module there will be free for everyone who has a complimentary Guitar FM account. But uh, let me just play that for you all together with that uh, kind of intermediate strumming pattern. And I know I went through the second phrase, but nothing changes as far as the bass notes you hit for each chord. They stay the same for each chord. So that second phrase will be same thing for the G. And then you go to the C, skip the E minor. Just do it twice for that. All right, now I'm gonna play through the entire song for you. I'll use all the strumming patterns that we talked about uh, for verse one and chorus one. I'll try to use uh, the more s simple or easier uh, strumming patterns that we talked about. And for verse two and chorus two, I'll use a little bit more of the, the intermediate uh, strumming pattern that we went over with those single bass notes. And of course, for verse uh, three and chorus three, uh, I'll use those alternate kind of more subdued strumming patterns to play through these. If you have any questions, you can always give us an email, support at guitarfam.com. We'd love to hear from you there, or just leave a comment on this video with your question, or just let us know what other easy song lessons you would like to see in the future. Here you go. Staring up the 
staring and I see headlines I made it down the coast in 17 hours Picking me a bouquet of dogwood flowers And I'm hoping for Raleigh I could see my baby tonight So rock me mama like a wagon wheel Rock me mama any way you feel Hey mama rock me Rock me mama like the wind and the rain Rock me mama like a southbound train Hey mama rock me On a truck around a Philly and a nice long tow But he's a heading west from the Cumberland Gap To Johnson City, Tennessee And I gotta get a move on before the sun I hear my baby calling my name And I know that she's the only one And if I die in Raleigh At least I will die free So rock me mama like a wagon 